In this last video of lesson 1, we are going to talk about scene objects and buffered RPCs. My name is Oliver Eberlei and you are watching the Sky Arena Photon Tutorial. We've talked about how to create synchronized objects like ships and lasers that are owned by one player. But what about the objects that aren't owned by anyone? Enemies, doors, triggers, pickups, all of these have to be synchronized as well and Photon has a specific name for them. Scene objects. A scene object is owned by the scene, which means as long as the scene is loaded, the objects will stay in the game as well. Regular objects that are created by specific players will automatically be deleted once that player leaves the game, which would create problems if, for example, a door is just deleted once the initial host leaves. This doesn't happen with scene objects. Technically, they are owned by the master client, which is usually the player who created the game. He is responsible for updating their state and sending it to everybody else. But even if the game creator leaves and there are still other players on the server, the status of master client and the ownership of all scene objects are simply transferred to one of the other clients that are connected to the server. This all happens automatically and you don't have to deal with anything related to this issue. Scene objects can be created in two different ways. One, any game object with a photon view that is placed into the scene in edit mode will automatically be handled as a scene object. And two, Photon offers the method Photon Network Instantiate Scene Object, which expects the same parameters as Photon Network Instantiate. The only difference is that the created object will be a scene object. In our demo, we are using scene objects for the team flags and the health pickups that are scattered all over this scene. Let's look into the pickup base class, which handles the untrigger event when a ship touches the pickup and sends it to all other clients. Once the pickup has been triggered, we check once again if we are in offline mode or not and then send the pickup event. For this RPC, we are choosing to send it to photon targets all buffered via server. We chose this target for two different reasons. We could have just sent the event to photon targets others because we already know that this event has happened. But imagine the health pickup. If two different ships are collecting it very close to each other, they both might think that they got the pickup because the event that the other ship got at first has not reached them yet. This is why we use all via server to ensure that every client sends the pickup event to the server first so that all pickup events arrive in order and we can determine correctly who got the pickup. The buffered part is very important here. It means that Photon remembers that this RPC was sent for all future players. So if a new player connects after the pickup has been collected, he will still get the message and hide the pickup as you would expect. The same is important for the flag. If you look at the pickup flag script, you won't find an unserialized view method which sends information about who picked up the flag or where it might be dropped. Since the RPCs have all the information that is necessary to determine where the flag is, we don't need to send this information multiple times per second. We just have to make sure that players who might join later into the game receive this information as well, which is exactly what a buffered RPC does. The pickup flag script has even more RPCs than just the pickup event. It needs to send data when the flag has been dropped by the carrying player, when a player returns his own flag that has been dropped in the field, and when a player manages to capture the enemy flag by bringing it home to their own flag. We could have used the photon targets all buffered by a server again to make sure that there are no overlapping events, but in this case I chose a slightly different approach just to illustrate it. In the methods that call the RPCs, drop flag, capture flag and return flag, you will notice that I check if the current client is the master client first. What this means is that even though all clients trigger these methods, nobody sends the actual event except for the master client. So to conquer possible overlapping events, we just give the master client the last word over what actually happens. This is another useful approach to combat latency issues in regards to events that need to trigger in the correct order. But depending on your prediction model, this might be less accurate. So, this is the first lesson about Photon Unity Networking. We have learned how to synchronize objects multiple times a second, like the player ships. You now also know what a remote procedure call is and how we can use it to send events to all clients. And lastly, we talked about scene objects and buffered RPCs. Armed with these concepts, you can start working on your multiplayer games. We would love to get feedback about this tutorial series from you. Was it helpful? Did we miss anything that you would like to know more about? Would you like to view more of these tutorials? There's still a lot to learn about Photon, like how we can create multiple different games simultaneously that don't disturb each other. Cheap protection, more advanced prediction methods, etc. So please let us know if you want more and also what you would like to hear next. 
Thank you for watching these tutorials and we hope you have a blast creating the next big multiplayer game with Photon.